Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 6 through 10. And I'm reading out of the Message Bible today. There's a brief word that God has given me. I must share it today. Amen. Must share it. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 6 through 10. Out of the Message Bible. Out of the Message Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 6 through 10. Out of the Message Bible. And it reads like this. The Egyptians abused and battered us in a cruel and savage slavery. We cried out to God, the God of our fathers and mothers. He answered, listened to our voice, and he saw our destitution, our trouble, and our cruel plight. And God took us out of Egypt. With his strong hand and long arm, terrible and great, with signs and miracle wonders. And he brought us to this place, gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So here I am. I've brought the first fruits of what I've grown on this ground you gave me, O oh God. Verse 10, then place it in the presence of God, your God. Prostrate yourselves in the presence of God, your God. You may be seated. God took us out of Egypt with his strong hand and long arm, terrible and great with signs and miracle wonders. He brought us to this place, gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So here I am with my harvest. I've brought the first fruits of what I've grown on this land you gave me. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's thank God for that. God took us out of Egypt with his strong hand, his long arm, terrible and great, with signs and miracle wonders, and he brought us to this place, gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So here I am. I've brought the first fruits of what I've grown on this ground you gave me, oh God. I want to talk today for a few moments, moments from this thought very simply. How to behave when you're blessed. How to behave when you're blessed. Look at the person beside you. If you haven't spoke to them all day, just smile at them. Smile at them. Go and smile at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we're going to talk at least 10 times through this sermon. So don't act brand new. How do you behave when you're blessed? That's the wrong one. Look at another one. Say, neighbor, do you know how to behave when you've been blessed? How to behave when you've been blessed? Sisters and brothers, we are immensely blessed, and most of us don't have a clue of just how blessed we are. Someone once wrote, don't think of all the things you didn't get after praying. Just take some time and think of all the countless blessings God gave you without asking. Although there are things we have prayed for and haven't received, there are so many things we have received and never prayed for. The problem is we have been acculturated and socialized to want more, seek more, get more, work more, become more, do more, buy more, save more, climb more, aspire for more, ask for more, and strive for more. Now this can be noble and admirable, but there's always the subtle, silent, seductive temptation to become ungrateful, dissatisfied, and greedy. Whether you know it or not, greed is one of the world's worst sins. Martin Luther King Jr. once said of America that it takes necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few. We are greedy people living in a greedy nation. Many people feel like two chains. You get mad, I'm getting rich. Many people feel like Rihanna. Oh, 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 all I see is signs. All I see is dollar signs. Money on my mind. Money, money on my mind. Some of us are just greedy. Why does one person need three cell phones? 
Why do two people need to live in a six bedroom house? Why does a house with four family members need five smart TVs? Why do we buy more clothes and we haven't worn the clothes we already have? Why do we go buy a new black dress and we have five black dresses at the house? What makes Apple keep coming out with updates to iPhones as if something was wrong with the last edition? We aren't hungry, but we keep eating. We aren't naked, but we keep shopping. We aren't lonely, but we keep cheating. We aren't homeless, but we keep looking for a bigger house. We have a cell phone, but we keep upgrading. We aren't barefoot, but we keep buying shoes. We aren't completely broke, but we keep working overtime. Greed is the desire for more when you don't don't really need it and it reveals something deeper about our human condition many of us are trying to use materials and the acquisition of cars cash cribs and creature conference to mask our insecurities and loneliness some of us are trying to fill voids and emptiness with stuff but it ain't working we are hoping that the things y'all ain't gonna help me we're hoping that the things will give us an identity that we have yet to discover on our own. So we become defined by what we have instead of being defined by who we are. We've got we, we have got to discover how to express ourselves without having to impress other people. Most of us are trying to cover up our emptiness and unhappiness by fronting for folks who ain't even thinking about us. So you at the mall buying something you can't afford trying to front. You driving a car, you need to be in a Honda, but you in a Mercedes trying to front. Well, today I feel some change getting ready to break because God allowed me to travel all the way from Hampton, Georgia to tell you it's time to confront the front. There are some empty spaces in your life that only God's love can fill. Sex can't fill it. Weed can't fill it. A car can't fill it. Jack Daniels and Coke, gin and tonic, Grey Goose and Juice can't fill it. A one night stand can't fill it. Clothes can't fill it. Trying to be on fleek can't fill it. More extensions on your hair can't fill it. Getting your face beat can't fill it. Buying more shoes can't fill it. Our greed only reveals the deeper problem, which is that we feel inadequate, deficient, unvaluable, and unworthy. And Tom Burrell in his book Brainwash said, most of us are suffering from the black inferiority complex. You don't think you are enough, so you trying to front and getting your hair done, your nails did, and your toes done trying to look cute for somebody not for yourself but you trying to put on for somebody else if we are not careful we will become seduced by society gripped by greed strangled by selfishness captured by capitalism locked up in our lust tortured by our thirst arrested by our appetites detained by our desires handcuffed to our habits destroyed by dollars messed up by money poisoned by pride and incarcerated by trying to be impressive but the only way to stay clear and content in a world that's always trying to prove who they are by what they have is to realize just how blessed you are Paul said I'm not referring to being in need for I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in I know what it is to have a little bit I know what it is to have plenty in all and any circumstances I've learned the secret to being well fed and to be hungry of having plenty and being in need because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength I dare you to count your blessings I have always been bad at math but I've always been good with counting my blessings the only bad things about counting my blessings is that I always forget more than I can remember if you can breathe you're blessed if you know your name you're blessed if you can remember your family members name you're blessed if you can see me right now you're blessed if you can hear me right now you're blessed if you walked in here you're blessed if you limped in here you're blessed if you rolled in here you're blessed if you're here 
you're blessed. If you can wiggle your toes, you're blessed. If you can wave your hand, you're blessed. If you can open your mouth, you're blessed. If you can turn your head, you're blessed. If you can stand up on both feet, you're blessed. If you got a heartbeat, you're blessed. If you can talk, you're blessed. And I see y'all sitting there looking like lumps on the log, uh, trying to sit, uh, trying to sit silent in the sanctuary like a statue. That's cute if that's you. Uh, you can sit there cute if you want to. But everything I just named is stuff you cannot pay for and stuff most of us didn't pray for and you know you show sure enough blessed when you get stuff you couldn't pay for and stuff you forgot to pray for. Somebody help me get on somebody's nerve and tap three people around you say I know I'm blessed I know I'm blessed I know I'm blessed. Some of y'all ain't touched nobody and your blessing is in your mouth. You may not feel blessed but you better speak it like you're already blessed anybody in here already blessed you may not have a mansion but you do have a house you may not have a house but you do have an apartment you may not have an apartment but you do have a room you may not have a room but you do have shelter you may not be the boss but you do have a job you may not have a job but you do have your joy you may not have a Ferrari but you do have a bad Ford you may not have a Bentley but you do have a bad Toyota you may not have a car but you did have a ride you may not have a ride but you do have a bus pass you may not have a bus pass but you do have legs you may not have Gucci but you got God you may not have St. John's but you got Jesus you may not have Prada but you got his promises you may not have Louis Vuitton but you do have the Lord you may not be balling but you do have your breath and somewhere I read let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. I ain't talking to you if you ain't blessed. But if you know for yourself that God's been blessing you, take 10 seconds and thank God for stuff you couldn't even pay for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're blessed. You may cry sometimes, but you're blessed. You may feel lonely sometimes, but you're blessed. And that's all our text is trying to teach us today. Because nothing worse than being blessed, the only thing worse than not knowing you're blessed is not knowing how to behave when you're blessed. I can sum up the entire book of Deuteronomy with just three little points. This book is teaching us about the creator of the covenant, about the content of the covenant, and about the conditions for enjoying the benefits of the covenant. This is Moses. Some people think, some scholars suggest that Moses wrote the book, and he's trying to tell the people about the content of the covenant, the law, that was going to help people enjoy the blessings of God. He's teaching them about the creator who gave them the covenant. But then he's teaching them about the conditions that they have to apply in their life if they're going to walk in the covenant. Some people say Moses wrote it. Some scholars have argued over the years that Moses could not have written it because this is the last book of the Pentateuch. That word penta means five. The first five books of the Bible, some scholars say Moses wrote it, but others suggest it could not have been Moses because Moses dies at the end of the chapter. How could a dying man write about his own death? So some people suggest it was the Deutero, uh, uh, it was the Deutero historians who wrote this book. To me, it doesn't even matter. It ain't a thing but a chicken wing. Doesn't matter if Moses wrote it. Doesn't matter if the Deuteronomistic historians wrote it. I like that it's here because what it teaches us is that children of God, like the children of Israel, can go through some things and through whatever you go through on the other side of your valley, you got a God who will set some stuff up for you. 
See, if you read verse 1 of chapter 26, just, just moonwalk backwards to verse 1. I like how the Deuteronomistic historian or Moses opened up this chapter. It says, once you enter the land that God, your God, is giving you as an inheritance and take it over and settle down, you are to take some of what God, take some of the first fruits of what you grow in the land that God, your God, is giving you. Put them in a basket. Go to the place your God sets up for you to worship and bring what you got out the land that God gave you back to the Lord. Okay, let me back up one more time. Verse 1 says, once you enter into the land. Y'all sleep. Verse 1, once you enter the land. Verse 1 says, once you enter the land. See, y'all didn't eat no breakfast. That ain't my fault. It's yours. Once you enter the land. Lil Wayne said, I ain't talking fast. You listening slow. Once you enter the land. See, they ain't in it yet. But there's been a promise declared that they will enter it. And see, some of y'all were just shouting a few minutes ago. You ain't shouting because you in it yet. But you know if God told you he'll do it, he will do just what he is there. Anybody here like me can say, I ain't in it yet, but I know it's on the way. And what Mo Moses or the Deuteronomistic uh, historian is trying to get us to understand is when you get to the land, there's some stuff we can't forget to do or else we'll mess up the conditions to enjoy the covenant. Do y'all want to know what Moses or the historian told us? Number one, you've got to be knowledgeable about your history. You got to be knowledgeable about your history. Read verse 5 through 7. I like this. He said, when you get to the altar with the fruit that you raise off the land and you bring your offering to the priest, when you get there, verse 4 and 5 teach us that there's a litany you are to recite. When you bring your offering to the Lord based off the blessing that he gave you, this is what you're supposed to say, a wandering Aramean talking about Abraham or Jacob was my father. He went down to Egypt and sojourned there. And he and just a handful of his brothers at first, but soon they became a great nation, mighty and many. Watch the history. The Egyptians abused and battered the children of Israel. They cried out to God, the God of our fathers. He listened to our voice. Don't read too fast. A wandering Aramean. Talking about Jacob. You remember the promise that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12? He said, go to a land that I will show you. So he's been wandering. He's been on his way. He births Jacob. Jacob, meaning trickster, went through a change in his life. His name was changed to Israel. Israel had a son named Joseph. You remember Joseph who his brothers turned on because he had a coat of many colors? Joseph ended up being second in command in Egypt. They're running, they're ballers and shot callers in Egypt. But the day came in Exodus chapter 1, it says there arose a Pharaoh in the land who knew not Joseph. When the Pharaoh didn't appreciate the history of Joseph and Jacob and Abraham, they put the children of Israel in slavery. And his people were people who knew about pain and pressure. His people, we came from a people that knew about being tortured, that knew what it felt like to go through slavery, that knew what it felt like to be mistreated because of their culture and the color of their skin. And I need to tell every young and not so young person in the sanctuary, it is important that you always know your history because if you don't know your history, you will be on TV and say something silly like Stacy Dash. Y'all must not watch the news around here. No, no, no. Stacey Dash was asked to comment on Will Smith and Jada boycotting the Oscars. She said, well, personally, I think we need to make up our minds. Either we're going to have integration or segregation. I think if we want to be treated right in our country, we need to get rid of BET, the BET Awards, and we need to get rid of black history. 
that's real cute if you look at it from one angle. But baby Stacy, as cute as you are, I'm concerned about your mind. Yes, we are all Americans, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out we ain't always been treated like Americans. All Americans ought to be able to walk through the front door of a restaurant. All Americans should have been able to drink out of whatever water fountain they wanted to. All Americans should have been able to sit wherever they wanted to on a bus. But you live in a culture that did not appreciate our heritage, so people had to start celebrating their own. That's why you got Black History Month. It came from one week that turned into one month. Thanks to the ingenious idea of Carter G. Woodson, he wanted people to know black folk had contributed to society. You wouldn't have a refrigerator if a black man hadn't created it. You wouldn't have half the stuff you use now if a black person had made it. Somebody show enough ought to thank God for the straightening cone. You wouldn't even have came to church today if some of y'all couldn't have found some heat for your hair. But this is what gets me about our history. I like that the Bible didn't just stop in the slavery and in the savage and in the struggle. I like what it says. It said, we cried out to God and he heard us. He, we cried out and he heard us. We were hurting, but he heard us. We were in pain, but he heard us. We were in the cotton field, but he heard us. They snatched mothers away from children, but he heard us. They separated husbands from wives, but he heard us. And you ain't got to go back to the eight hundreds some of y'all been in trouble this year and you had to cry out to the Lord and the only reason you didn't throw your hands up and give up is because he heard you is there anybody around here who can thank God he hears you when you call see see some of y'all too cute for me right now no, no, I ain't talking to some of y'all that got that cute prayer life. Oh, Lord, bless the whole wide world. Amen. No, I'm talking to the folks that know what it's like to lose some sleep. You got to walk around the house because you can't go to bed. And you cry out and say, Lord, I need you to stop by. Has he ever stepped in in your midnight crisis? You got to be knowledgeable about your history. But then you've got to be accountable by having humility. You got to be accountable by having humility. Where's the humility? Verse 8. Look at this. And God took us out of Egypt uh, with his strong hand and his long arm. Terrible and great. Now, we could have walked. Watch them now. We did walk to the Red Sea. Moses did have a staff, but their walking and his lifting wasn't going to open no Red Sea. So when they look back in their history, nobody tries to take credit. They just say, hey, God took us. You just miss your shout. Because the worst person that's in the room right now is the arrogant person who's impressed with themselves. Oh, I've been to school. I went to Spelman. I went to Fort Valley. Oh, oh, the reason I am where I am is because I use my networks. I pledge Delta. I pledge Omega. I pledge AKA. I'm an Alpha. I'm a Zeta. I'm Sigma Gamma Rho. It doesn't matter who you are, baby. The Greek letters didn't bring you. It was nobody but G-O-D. I wonder, is there somebody other than me can look back over your life and testify God took me. He took me out of a bad relationship. Took me from a bad job. Took me out of my depression. And if it had not been for the Lord on my side, shake somebody's hand and say baby God took me he took me when I was broke he took me when I was crying he took me when I was low and he lifted me 
Hey, I'm thinking about writing a book soon, but my first book is going to be one page. The title of the book is Sharp's Testimony by Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. It's going to have one page in the book and it's going to have three words and a period. God took me. Is there anybody here? You can write the same book. He took you through it. He took you out of it. I dare you to praise God what he took you out of. I dare you to praise God like you about to lose your mind for what he took you through. You should have been dead. You should have been crazy. But the Lord took you. So, so, you got to be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable about your history. Be accountable by having humility. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But then thirdly, uh, it's reasonable to show generosity. But no, 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 shut up. Hold on now, hold on now. You, you're making this up. It's right there, verse 9. Read it, read it, verse 9. Hey, God brought us to this place. He gave us. Y'all see these verbs? He took us. He brought us. He gave us. Lord, I can, I can close right there. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. So, here I am. I brought some of the first fruits. Soon as my fruits got ripe, Soon as my tomatoes turn red, soon as my cucumbers got big enough, soon as my collards start budding, soon as my mangoes got ripe, soon as the oranges turned deep orange, I didn't give God what was left over. I gave him something off the top. And the reason I don't mind giving off the top is because I wouldn't have nothing if he hadn't gave it. See, I am not going to be the type of pastor up here begging for money Sunday after Sunday. No, 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 no. I'm going to ask you to give because your giving is connected to your relationship with God. When you don't give something, you're basically telling God, you ain't giving me something. Now, let me drop some heavy, but I'm going to make it light. And let the church say, imago day. That means I'm created in the image of God. But there's another Latin phrase that's not imago day. We like that. I'm created in the image of God. But there's another Latin phrase that's called imatio day. Let the church say, Imatio Day. It's spelled I-M-I-T-A-T-I-O. Now, I am the Imago Day because I'm created in the image of God. But all of us have a responsibility for Imatio Day. That means I imitate God. Some of y'all look like God but you don't act like God. Whatever God does for you, it is your responsibility to then do it for somebody else. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Y'all don't like me now. But go down to verse 12. Watch verse 12. Put it on the screen. I want everybody to see this. Every third year, because of the way the tides would flow with the Nile River, and the agriculture, they couldn't do it every day, every week, every month. They said every third year, the year of the tithe, give a tenth of your produce. This is the basis for where we get tithing. Give a tenth of your produce to the Levite. That's the worshiper. Tiffany, we got you. The foreigner, the orphan, and the widow. 
so that they may eat their fill in the city. The worshiper does not work. The foreigner doesn't have a job. The orphan doesn't have parents. And the widow doesn't have a husband. Everybody who's suffering in your community, the reason you're bringing your gifts ain't just so the preacher can get a bigger car. You're giving your gifts so that people less fortunate than you, when they come to your church, they ought to be able to benefit from the blessing. See, I know why half of y'all just did this. Because you don't understand how quickly life can shift. See, you can be up today and you can be down tomorrow. But ain't it good news that you got some people around you that'll help you through your tough spot. We are the Imago Day, but we're supposed to be participating in the Imatio Day. When's the last time you act like God? This ain't just about tithing in church. When's the last time you saw somebody begging on the side of the road and you had a $5 bill that you could have given them but you didn't? There's a man who just repaved our entire parking lot. He said to me, we did it because I got to pay tithes somehow. You don't always have to give with money. You can also give with your time. You can also give with your prayers. You can also give by your service. Have you acted like God lately? Lust takes, love gives. Don't you say you love this church and you're not giving anything to the church. Husband, your wife's going to look at you differently now. Don't you ever let a Negro tell you he loves you and he don't give you nothing. No, I ain't talking about no jewelry from Tiffany's. I'm not talking about no red bottom shoes. I'm not talking about something from Bloomingdale's or Nordstrom's or Neiman Marcus. No, no, no. Bruh, when you leave work, grab you some construction paper. Draw out a heart. Say, baby, I love me some you. Go by the drugstore. Get her favorite candy, a packet of M&M's. When you get home, hand her a cutout heart with a packet of M&M's. I promise you, God will bless your night. Don't say you love somebody and you're not willing to give anything. Y'all don't like me. Be knowledgeable about your history. Yeah, yeah, you be accountable by having humility. It's reasonable to show generosity. But watch this move. Watch his last move. It's understandable to express joviality. Let the church say joviality. Well, that's a new word on me. Yeah, for me too. I, I just went on a thesaurus and I looked up another word for happy. I like to have my sermons to have a rhyme scheme. So you know what it is to be jovial, don't you? Have a little pep in your step. A little glide in your stride. You ought to be excited. No, 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 no. Hold on. Did you see that in the text shop? Yes, I did. Look at verse 10. When you get to the place in the presence of God, prostrate yourselves in the presence of God, your God, and do something else and rejoice. Celebrate all the, are y'all reading this? Good things that God has given you and your family. All the good things. Good things. See, 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 when I see people come to church and look sad, I get worried about you. Because it seemed to me like you've forgotten the good things. See, I showed that video on purpose. 106 year old lady lived long enough to see a black president. Born 1909. 
and she lived long enough to see a black president. They couldn't keep her still. She's on a cane, but she can't keep her composure because I believe she just looked back over those 106 years. She remembered Jim Crow. She remembered when they killed Emmett Till. She remembered when they assassinated King. She remembered when they killed Malcolm X. She remembered when they beat Fannie Lou Hamer. She remembered when they arrested Rosa Parks. She remembered when that black man walked his black self into the White House and she looked back over her life and she said, God, you've been doing some good things and if a 160 year old lady can give God a praise in the White House then I'm wondering what's wrong with some of us if a 106 year old lady who can barely stand up on her own could still thank God for doing the unbelievable then some of you ought to look over your life and just throw your hands up and say Lord you've been doing some good things I watch the sanctuary and every now and then a praise break will break out in the sanctuary and I watch some of y'all faces you get so concerned it looks like you get scared when you see people start running when you see people start jumping when you see people start dancing and sometimes when the praise breaks get started I take off singing to God be the glory for all the things he has done and y'all may not understand why I always sing that song but let me just tell you the reason why I say to God be the glory for all the things is because you don't know some of the things God done for me you don't know all the things that God's brought me through yeah. you don't know all the things that God has fixed a body thing a house thing a family thing a job thing a school thing a marriage thing a death thing a grief thing just grab your neighbor say neighbor you don't know all the things God's done for me find you another neighbor find you another neighbor <laughs> find you another neighbor say neighbor if I tried to tell you I would run out of time God's been walking with me God's been holding my hand God's been drying my tears God's went to the funeral with me God went to the hospital with me God rocked me to sleep late at night and God tapped me this morning and woke me up right on time and I when I think about all the things God's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah is there anybody here that can throw your head back and say God I just want to thank you for everything everything every victory every breakthrough every mountain you brought me over every valley you've seen me through every test you helped me pass every tear you wiped away now I got to go I gotta preach at three but put your arm 
around your neighbor. Put your arm around a neighbor. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. If they look sleepy, go find somebody else. If they don't look interested, go find somebody else. But shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them and say, neighbor, you don't know all the things God brought me out. You don't know all the tears he wiped away. But tonight, just remember, be not dismayed, whatever. Be tired, cause God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care. Slap three hands and say, I'm happy over everything. I'm happy over everything. Every valley, every mountain, every tear. I'm happy over everything. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Say us. Say us. Say us, say us, say us. church they didn't come to have no church
Let's stand. Say, name up. This is how you're supposed to act when you've been blessed. This is how you act when you've been blessed. Don't you wait till the battle is over. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go up, go up, go up. Stand. The doors, the doors of the church. The doors of the church are open. Somebody shout things. Woo. Somebody shout things. I want you to look this week. For some unexpected things. As soon as you get to church next week, you don't need no music. You don't need a praise team. Just by yourself. Thank you for the things. Thank you for the things. The doors of the church.